Hey guys, this is Matt Core from ControlPaint.com, and today we are going to talk about cleaning up messes. Well, not exactly. As we continue to tailor our digital workspaces, what starts as good intention customizing can pretty quickly devolve into a panel mess like this one. So today it's all about how these panels can be snapped together to have a nice clean look, but one you have total control over. So the first thing to notice is that I actually leave a little bit of breathing room around the edges of my screen, and that's on purpose. The only reason for that is that on a Cintiq or sometimes on USB tablets, it's a little hard to get right up against that edge. It's less sensitive, but you might not want to do that. So the first thing to know is that you can grab any of these floating panels by their top little bar here. And then if I want to shift it until I see a blue bar up here, it can snap all the way to the edge of the screen. So now it's become full vertical height. I can adjust the width, but there's no gaps. Now you also might notice that there are two tabs. So this is a standard layout where you can maybe use your layers most of the time, but sometimes you want paths. Well, the tab will sort of overwrite whatever's displayed. For whatever reason, you might want to have them next to each other. Well, that's easy too. So I'm gonna free up a little space here and I'm gonna grab the paths tab and pull it out. So now it's a free floating panel, which might be what I want, or maybe I want it to be the same vertical height. So here I can change any of these widths, but they're all the full vertical height. So maybe what you want to do is to have something like channels also in this column. Well, in the same manner, if I go to the bottom, I can actually split this column in half. Now, something you might want to do is to keep them floating panels, but to have a little more order. So the way I could do that is to wait for that little blue line to appear. And now I have snapped two floating panels together to be a single floating panel. You can also do that to the side here. Wait till it turns blue. And then you can adjust the height to make it all nice and square if you want to. So here we have a single floating panel that has a very nice gridded layout, no wasted space, and you can move it as a unit. Well, those are sort of the core functions that we have to work with, but we can mix and match. So maybe what I want is, let's see here, I can have paths and channels next to each other, each as their own column. But then for some reason, maybe I want color as a tab on this right half. So here I can have channels and color as tabs. I can choose the width of each of those columns and the whole thing is a floating panel. And you can continue to mix and match. So maybe I want the adjustments to be the bottom half of this column or actually we'll put it up top. So here we have one column that on the top is a full width panel. Below that is two tabs and it has another full height panel here and the whole thing can be moved as a group. So you can see here, it's this nice snap together modular system and it gives us a lot of control. And then all of these panel placements and arrangements are stored as a workspace. So the one I've called test that I've been working with, I can just switch back to my normal one, which is a control paint setting here. And this should look familiar. So you can assign a hotkey to each of these and have dramatically different layouts but they can still stay clean. And that's the important part, is that it's just really nice to have a combination of custom, but not messy. And Adobe has given you a lot of really powerful tools to make that happen. All right, in this series, we've covered a lot of ground. So I'm gonna give you an assignment, and that is to think about some part of your workflow that has different tools than the ones you normally use. What I'm gonna try is uh, color grading or color correction. Those are very specific tools that I use for only a small portion of the process. And I'm gonna make a custom layout just for color grading. In the next video, that's what we're gonna talk about. So before you watch the next video, I encourage you to make your own very specific workflow-centric workspace. And while you're doing it, really try out these different modular snapping techniques to make some cool layouts. Have fun. Thanks for coming to the site, guys.